You know, ever since I did this back in November, I've been wanting to redeem myself and to give a chance to the racket to do the same, and the day has finally come. Today we're taking a look at the brand new Pure Strike 97. Hey everybody, it's Luca from Rackets and Runners. So yeah, I put the Strike VS in the C tier, which I've really regretted ever since because my reasoning for it was kind of dumb considering what the racket's supposed to represent. The Strike VS, and now the Strike 97, is Babolat's true classic control racket. The Strike 98 is not that. It's a modern racket in every sense, yes with a heavy emphasis on control, but it's not control that's ready to sacrifice everything to be the best in that one category. That's the point of the Strike 97. It's meant to optimize control, but before we get into any of that, let me remind you that any of the rackets we talk about here, you can check out on our website, racketsandrunners.ca, and please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let me know in the comments section what you want me to cover next. Now first things first, I want to know what everybody thinks about this paint job. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of white rackets. I find that they look bigger and kind of distract me while they're swinging through the air. I was such a big fan of how the previous one looked. Charcoal and red was always going to be a hit, but also the glossy paint job was done really well. I don't know if I prefer the matte, but I will say for a white racket, it does look really good. But anyways, let's go over some specs. The Strike 97 weighs 310 grams, with a leather grip by the way, it has a 97 square inch head size and a 16 by 20 string pattern. The only spec differences coming from the VS are in swing weight and stiffness. The swing weight I don't know if I actually want to say is different because the difference is so minimal it might not actually be by design, but this one was swinging at 320 and the previous one was 316 strong. Stiffness wise it has gone up a bit, plus 2 points to be exact, which is interesting because that's the opposite direction the Strike 98 went. But like the Strike 98, they also added NF2 Tech Flax inserts, which if you have watched our previous videos, you know I'm a really big fan of. I left beam thickness for last because it's the only thing you kind of look at and think, okay, a little weird for a control racket, because it's 21 millimeters, then 22, then back to 21 millimeters in the throat. I know that's thin, but it is non-constant, and we'll talk about how that affects playability, but despite it thickening up a little bit near the bridge, feel is still excellent, and it's the number one reason that most people will be looking at trying this thing. Traditional. The best way to describe the feel on the Pure Strike 97 is the word traditional, which I know is going to make a lot of players very happy. It really is epic to play with something like this when you're on your game. It's similar to the previous VS, but you have this raw, soft, and flexible feel, and really not much tech intruding on the connection you have with the ball. The only real difference coming from the VS is that it's a little more lively and definitely more solid on impact, which probably has to do with those NF2 Tech Flax inserts that have solidified pretty much every racket they're added into. But otherwise, this is a thin beam control racket, one of the best you can get nowadays, up there with frames like the Prestige or Gravity Pro. You can really feel the ball sink into the string bed pocket, and you benefit from all that dwell time with the ability to really place it wherever you want in your opponent's court. If I did have to nitpick a tiny little thing about the feel, and maybe this is placebo, but the flex doesn't feel totally uniform because it is a little thicker at the bridge. I've discussed this a little bit before, especially with the Radical, but it's not nearly as annoying on the Strike 97, and to be honest, when I'm not actively thinking about it, I can't really tell, but it is literally my job to actively think about these things, so yeah. So why don't more rackets feel like this nowadays? Well, to be honest, traditional did take me a second to get used to again after playing with modern control rackets like the Blade, Percept, or Strike 98. I had this strung at 53 pounds, which is kind of my go-to, and with that low 320 swing weight, the racket didn't really work. It is a little weird to say that a racket just doesn't work, but that is kind of what happens with traditional control rackets at a low swing weight with a poly strung at 50 plus pounds. There was a really annoying pinging sound and this jarring kind of metallic feel just because there wasn't enough material crushing the ball. And when a poly doesn't have enough force behind it, it feels pretty awful. This isn't specifically the Strike 97's fault. I have a similar sensation with my uncustomized Pro Tour 280. You just have to be a little bit more careful about how you customize this thing, including the tension you go for. If you do want to tap into its full potential, you're going to need to add mass because that's when you'll get the beam to start flexing properly, and I really only got it dialed in once it was up around that 330 swing weight. As you can imagine, night and day difference, that pingy metallic poly feel was completely gone, and that's when I got that amazing classic connection to the ball that you can only really get with traditional feel at a high swing weight. Now for a lot of people, a 330 plus swing swing weight is a little high. While there are obviously other control rackets that'll give you 90% of the feel of the Pure Strike 97, 
But another thing you can try is stringing at a lower tension. I borrowed Beckett from Tencom's Pure Strike VS, which had more bagged out poly in the lower 40 pound range, and also had this one strung at 47, and that played much better when I didn't have the lead in the hoop. It makes sense. You can make your sweet spot more forgiving with lead or by stringing at a lower tension because that adds some trampoline effect to the outer parts of the sweet spot. I still don't know which I would recommend more, but for me personally, I'm a higher tension kind of guy. I think the perfect setup would be something along the lines of a poly at 47 to 49 pounds with a swing weight between 325 and 330, but I really wouldn't go under 325 for swing weight either way. Despite those NF2 Tech Flax inserts, it really doesn't feel like there's much of that modern stabilization tech that you're gonna get with some of those more tech forward control rackets. So yeah, weight is the name of the game with stability here. We're gonna move on from feel, but I did just wanna say, this racket is kinda cool. You really don't get many feel profiles like this anymore. It's not as user friendly, so it is a bit of a tough sell, but the Strike 97 is a throwback to classic control rackets and really a throwback to why a lot of us became so addicted to rackets in the first place. I love it. Control goes hand in hand with feel here, and as you can imagine from a thin beamed soft Babolat 97, you're going to get loads of precision and control. And for those of you that are thinking, oh, it's a Babolat, it must be stiff, overly powerful, and an arm killer, you gotta familiarize yourself with thin beam Babylon 97s. They're some of the best control rackets of all time. The fact that there's no intrusive technology here is just a bonus for control because A, it means that there's nothing ruining the connection you have for the ball, and B, it means that there's no tech there artificially expanding the sweet spot. On rackets that have a lot of stabilization tech, the sweet spot basically gets bigger, which makes them more user friendly, but it also takes away from feedback in and out of it. You won't have a problem with that here, but despite it having great control, I still wouldn't say it's up there with the best control rackets I've ever tried. I think it comes down to that non-constant beam, but you get a tiny bit of rigidity here, which makes the dwell time a little shorter than on those ultra soft control rackets, like the Pure Control 97, for example. With a racket like that, you can whack at the ball and it'll basically never go long. You do have to be a little more careful here because it has a tendency to pop off the string bed with a little more zing. Now, pop off the string bed is certainly not a bad thing. Even though it is a little uncharacteristic for this style of racket, it gives the Strike 97 more power than those ultra-thin control frames. It's definitely not an easy depth type of power like you'll get with the Pure Drive or Pure Arrow. You have to swing fast and full to tap into it, but when you do, you can really feel the frame start punching through the ball. So I will admit, this isn't as low-powered, high-controlled as those Pure Storms and Pure Controls I just alluded to. It has a livelier, more modern feel, but I think that makes it more appropriate for a control racket in 2024. It is still by far Babolat's most controlled frame, and even compared to a blade, it has more traditional control. So if that's what you're looking for, you should absolutely try this racket. So this video's intro was kind of me apologizing for disrespecting this frame a bit last year, but after giving it more time, there's still something that bothers me a little bit. I love the control, I love the feel, I even love the fact that it's a platform racket because I love customizing my rackets, but there is something about the maneuverability and swing pattern that just doesn't work for me. I don't know how to explain it better, but this doesn't feel like a 97 when it's swinging through the air. It feels like a 97 on contact, small sweet spot, plenty of precision and control, but it's when I'm trying to brush up on the ball that it doesn't have that same micro adjustability as something with a similarly small head size. I don't know if it's these cap style of grommets, but to me it feels just a little bit clunkier, more like a 98 or maybe even a 99. This was a slight issue with the net for volleys. One of the best characteristics of a 97 or even a 95 is just how easy it is to tweak when you have to react quickly. This just doesn't have as much of that. The bigger issue was from the baseline though, and it goes back to what I was saying about not being able to brush up on the ball super quickly. Remember, this is a control racket. There's nothing inherently spin friendly about it, but the difference between this and something like a Pro Staff is that the Pro Staff feels more maneuverable, so it's easier to accelerate the racket head through contact. That's how you can still generate spin with these rackets that don't have anything inherently spin friendly about them, but it is more difficult to do that here. I felt like I had to work extra hard to hit with spin, so I will say, unless you're a very high level open player, there are quicker rackets that will be more user friendly in that regard. Especially if you're comparing it to something like the Aero 98, that racket just has so much great variety to it. Yes, of course, you can go for big, powerful winners, but if you want to slow it down, you can with high spin, loopy, high percentage spin shots. So I will say this racket is a little one dimensional, but it has such great feel and great control that it really knocks it out of the park in that one dimension. So despite some of those flaws, I never wanted to put it down.
I do want to make one thing clear. Despite what I just said about this racket being a bit one-dimensional, it will still work for a wider player base than something like a Prestige Pro, for example. It is a little bit lacking in spin, but it's still a 16 mainer, so it has more than most 1820s. You just have to be really good and swing really hard to tap into it. This isn't a racket made for intermediates or even low-level advanced players. You'll only start to appreciate it when you're consistently crushing the ball because that's when it's going to give you that great feel and unique pop. If you are looking for something with a little bit more control than something like a blade, for example, and you're fine customizing your rackets and playing with a heftier swing weight, this is definitely something you should have your eye on. There's nothing else out there that has such a pro vibe it really is the ultimate control racket in 2024. I also think it'll better complement a flat style of play. Not a super counter punchy flat style like Gilles Simon, but more so if you like flattening out your shots when you're going big. You obviously can hit with spin, but I do think there are better options if you're a big spin player, even within the control rackets category. So have I completely changed my mind about the Strike 97 or VS or whatever you want to call it? No. It's definitely not a C tier racket, but I do think it's a little too niche to put in the S tier, We'll see where I put it when I make another tier list video. For now though, that is going to be the end of this review. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, if you do want to demo the Strike 97, you can come visit us in store or you can check it out online at racketsandrunners.ca.